Hey, everybody, welcome back to the show this week. I want to talk about your first five episodes of your podcast. And there's a very important reason I want to talk about it because most podcast listeners are not going to listen to you from the beginning. You're going to grow your audience over time. But there's a behavior among podcast listeners that is very clear that I see a lot, and it's that they will discover you later on, maybe episode 20, episode 50, episode 250. And then they will immediately go back to episode one and listen to all of your podcasts. They won't necessarily binge, but they will go back through. And I and I deal with this all the time. I actually just got off a call with a client where I took them back sh- through and showed them in their Libsyn stats that over the last three months, episode one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, whatever, got 20 downloads a month, new downloads from people that had discovered later on and gone back through. And if you see your numbers being consistent, if you see your numbers growing and you see those older episodes always getting downloads, you know that it's an evergreen asset and people are going back through from the beginning. So I want to talk today about what you should do in your first five episodes to make sure that you deliver the most powerful value possible to your listeners. So episode one, what should you talk about? You should tell your story. You should tell how you got to this point, how you got to this point of starting a podcast. What have you been doing in your life? What have you been doing with your business? And share that information to begin a relationship from the, your, from the beginning of your podcast that is based in authenticity, that is based in people connecting with you and understanding that you are on the same journey that they are on, that you might just be a little bit further along. And, and then briefly at the end of the episode, kind of cover why are you doing the podcast? Just, just touch on it a little bit. Why is the podcast there? We talked about that a couple episodes ago. Why does it exist? Then in episode two, go much deeper into the why of the podcast. Why did you create it? Why did you feel moved? Why were you inspired to create this podcast? And then talk more about what are you going to be doing on the podcast? How are you going to be helping them? What experts are you going to be talking to? What are you going to bring to the show each week that will help them? Now, once you've covered that in episode one and two, you've got this great foundation of why people should like you, why they should listen to you, and why should they should stick around. Then really immediately, before you interview anyone, before you interview any experts, jump into the ways that you can help them. So I tell people, think about, you know, what are the three most common questions you get? Um, what are the three most frequently encountered pain points you your clients have? What are three major areas of value you could deliver to the listener? What are, what are three of the most common problems you solve for your clients? Pick one of those. And do one each in episode three, episode four, and episode five. And immediately, not only have you told people who you are, what you're about, how you're going to help them, but you're going to start helping them right away. And you're going to hit the big things. And so if you've determined why your podcast exists and who you're talking to and who your ideal listener is, then you will immediately deliver value to them and they will move on from there and love what you're talking about. So let me give you an example. Now, if this is a business podcast, that's really easy to do those types of things. You know what the questions you are, you you get, you know what problems you solve. But let's say you're doing an entertainment podcast. I'll take an example um, from a podcast that I listen to. If if you don't know uh, this about me, I collect vintage watches and so um, wristwatches and I will uh, listen to the occasional watch podcast. It might sound boring to some people but it can be interesting to others. Um, so here's an example from a podcast that I listened to. In, in the first episode of their podcast, their title, and you can kind of tell what this episode was about, was who we are, what are we talking about, and what do we love about our watches? Okay, very clear. That's their story. That's where they're coming from. Uh, that's kind of a little bit of why they're doing. And then they skipped to the substance right away in episode two. They covered all the different types of watch movements. If you don't know what a movement is, that's basically the guts of the, the watch and the clock and how it moves and keeps time. And then episode three, the world's most iconic watches. Episode four, the history of time telling from sundials to smartwatches. And then episode five, 
cheap watches and and what to look for when you're buying them. So they got into the substance right away. They delivered value right away. And that's just an example of how you can do that, whether you're doing a, a business podcast, uh, an educational podcast, or whether it's just entertainment. Hopefully this helped you out and it'll set you on the right path when you're planning out those first few episodes of your podcast. Hey folks, I wanted to take a moment to tell you a little bit about a tool that I use every month. It's called Text Expander, and I, I, I get a monthly email from them where they report on how much time I have saved by using Text Expander. And I just love getting this because I'm looking at last month, and I saved close to an hour and 17 minutes using Text Expander. If you're if you're not familiar with it, Text Expander basically allows you to insert uh, snippets of text in any app from a library of content that you have created. So I have simple things like my email address and my phone number and my home address, all the way to email templates that I've created or answers to questions that I answer all the time. I can easily shoot these snippets into any app, any email, any document that I'm creating, and it saves a ton of time. Um, I would love for you to check them out. If you are interested in using Text Expander, just go to dannyosmond.com slash text expander for more information. Nowadays, people expect to consume multiple types of content based on their needs. That's why podcasting has become an essential strategy for businesses to promote themselves. The great thing about podcasting is that it's the only online content platform that allows for passive consumption. In other words, anyone can listen to a podcast actively and learn from it while also doing something else. A person can be working out at the gym, driving to the workplace, or sitting at the bus stop waiting for their ride. In any of these situations, you can tune into a podcast and learn about something while doing something else. As a listener to a podcast, you don't need to keep your eyes constantly fixed to your screen. You don't have to focus hard to understand what you're reading. You simply consume the content as you listen to it without disrupting your daily life. Basically, a podcast is a seamless part of a daily routine for many people. This is also the primary goal for many podcast creators. Think about it. The average commute time in the United States is about 25 minutes. That's 25 minutes of podcast audio people could be tuning into. With a podcast, you're providing people with an opportunity to learn about what you have to offer in an environment where other content platforms simply cannot compete. Another great thing about podcasting is that it lets you develop stronger relationships with your audience. While a person is listening to you speak, you put your voice in their ears. It feels intimate. And they can easily pick up on your intonation and your emotion by listening to your voice. As a podcast listener myself, I find that it's easier to empathize with a speaker by listening to their voice as they tell their story. When done right, you can transport listeners to a particular moment in your life that could be easily relatable to them. After all, finding common ground with people is an amazing way to develop relationships. When I go to events and get to meet my podcast listeners for the first time, we usually hit it off as though we've been longtime friends. Thanks to my podcast, there's this sort of intimate connection that I've made with them. Those interactions at first caught me off guard. For instance, when a listener recounts something about me that I mentioned in a past podcast episode, it can feel a little jarring. I thought to myself, wait, how do you know that about me? But then I realized it's because that individual had been listening as an avid listener to my podcast and was trying to connect with me. Eventually, I got used to that and realized just how powerful podcasts can truly be. I'm just using my microphone in my office and developing great relationships with my audience, which is something that no other platform can do today. However, Developing your own podcast is no simple feat. You need the right guidance to make sure that your podcast starts off on the right path towards success. That's why I have my podcast launch intensive, and that's what it's all about. It provides a 10-week intensive training course with four to five activities a week for people to complete, allowing them to overcome the common obstacles for a podcast launch. The main goal of the podcast launch intensive is to help people save on time, effort, and money when it comes to common do-it-yourself mistakes. It's about making intentional decisions that will help you get started in podcasting and eventually become successful with it. 
Sign up and join the intensive today. Go to dannyosmond.com slash PLI to find out more.